Hi and welcome guys. Thank you for joining us today. I know that it's a bit of a crazy time at the moment, but uh, we really appreciate you guys coming on and um, we can see that this, this webinar has been incredibly successful in terms of the amount of interest that we've gotten. Um, it's about keeping calm and creating pipeline during these challenging times. Everybody, it's funny, we were just talking in the last couple of minutes, it's the first time in my life anyway that all of us across the world have been in, in a similar situation personally where it's a little bit confusing and we don't really know what the next steps are. Um, typically, um, create, remaining calm in these types of situations is always the best way forward. Today, we're gonna to be bringing you through how to remain empathetic towards uh, prospects in particular in this, in, this, um, in this new world at the moment. Um, and then also look at some ways in which we can um, in which we can uh, better our marketing and sales efforts. Um, joining me today, so I'm Andy Culligan. I'm the CMO at Lead Feeder. Uh, joining us today are uh, Mark Shabat and uh, Alex Olly from uh, ReachDesk. Um, ReachDesk, I just want to mention. Not only do I know Alex for for quite a while, just having worked with him in the um, in the tech space for for the past couple of years, but also they're a customer of Lead Feeder. So uh, Alex will be bringing us through and Mark as well, some of the use cases that they've seen over the past couple of weeks, which they feel um, have helped their business come along. Um, I'll also be looking at some areas in which we can, we just areas of thought around the, the topic of empathy and having empathy and how, how, you, how you sell at the moment. Um, but like, let's, let's just get started. So if I look at, you know, uh, where we've been affected from a B2B perspective. Let's just talk about like life in general. So um, as everybody can probably tell uh, by my accent, I'm Irish. So the first question here is where is this? This is Dublin. And this is, uh, when I ask which day of the year it is, this is uh, St. Patrick's Day in 2019, okay? So St. Patrick's Day is the 17th of March, so two days ago. This was 2019, as you can see, in a place called, in a place called Temple Bar, which is in the center of Dublin. Um, so relatively packed, I would say, a crazy day generally. If I look at the difference between 2020 and 2019, this was taken around the same time as this picture below with the 2019 during the day. Um, you can see the big difference between what's happening in Temple Bar two days ago in comparison to what was happening a year and two days ago. So across the world, regardless if it's, uh, if it's a B2B event, it's a B2C event, events of all kind, public gatherings of all kind have obviously been put on hold for now as we as uh, we move into this um, confusing stage at the moment. But, um, you know, the, the the impact that we're going to see on, on B2B over the coming months is, you know, I've just been looking at uh, events that have been cancelled or, um, or or set back or postponed or moved to digital, and it's, it's overwhelming. So if we look at some of the facts, I, I've done a fair bit of Googling over the past couple of days just to, understand you know what the event space is actually like so if we look at um event marketing in 2019 so i went and took a look at a report that gave me some benchmarks and it was a very good and detailed report it was based on um, a thousand plus senior marketers were interviewed and in companies that were managing over 738 million dollars in event budget per year uh, mainly focused on the industries of software services and media so some of the key takeaways that i took from that from that specific report were um, so 30% said that, you know, uh, these events were organized to, to focus on lead gen and sales, sales acceleration, so building pipeline, okay? 41% um, of those people also seen this as the most critical marketing channel in order to reach those pipeline targets. And on top of that, people were looking to invest more money this year in um, events as a marketing channel. So, like, we can see that events play a huge role in marketers' lives. Um, and based on the current landscape, you know, the biggest events that we're looking at or the biggest events in the calendar for this year have either been postponed, moved to digital or else canceled altogether. So if we look at a couple here, like in Europe, we look at online marketing rock stars, the one here on the left, OMR. So OMR is one of the biggest digital marketing festivals in Europe. This was canceled last week. It's not supposed to take place until May, but it's already been canceled. If I look at some of the other ones here, these are coming up quicker than then. So they're, they're, these are looking at March and April events. Most of the things for April are, are done. They're either moving to digital or, they're, or they're, they're being postponed or canceled altogether. For example, the Adobe Summit, that's been moved to a digital event. Again, this is a bit of a test to see how it performs, but who knows where that's gonna end up. So it's a bit of a, 
you know, a strange time for people um, in, in marketing in terms of being able to create or in sales as well to be able to create that pipeline. So typically we look at, you know, February, March, April, May as being the real peak in event season um, at the start of the year. And then the, towards the latter end of the year, you've got then September, October, November. Um, summer months are normally uh, very quiet when it comes to events. But those two times are pivotal times in a salesperson's calendar when they can actually go and start creating pipeline. Okay. So I'll take like one real life example. And I've, I've been speaking with some, um, with uh, a company that, that invested in Demexco last year. So Demexco again is a very large digital marketing event, which takes place in, um, in Germany every year. Okay. So this takes place in September. And we can see that, okay, for this overall, what, what, what the spend was about 30K, sent about four salespeople. Before the event, 50 meetings were pre-booked, so face-to-face -face meetings with prospects. On top of that, an additional 100 leads were then captured. And ac across all four of those salespeople's pipelines, there was 500K in pipeline and opportunities created. Okay, So this leaves a gap in people's uh, or in salespeople's um, pipeline. So where, how do we fill that gap? You know, this is the big question. So there's, if we look at like how things have been happening up until now. So from a salesperson's perspective, like we see that there's a number of different areas in which like need to be improved in any case. So like if we're moving forward and the, myself and the guys were just talking about this before we came on, like the, when we come out the back of all these different changes, we all believe that we will come out as better salespeople and better marketers because we're just going to have to improve on how we do things. Okay. So if I look at like the outreach pre 2020. Okay. So there's a meme that I found online about this. So it said the prospect said she was interested, called back 16 times with no answer. Right. So to a lot of people, this would look familiar and having been an SDR myself in the past, this is a very familiar story. The one important point that I'd say here is that the prospect said is something that's marked here which means actually they managed to get a connect, which is actually still quite a difficult thing to do. So the fact that they even managed to connect with a prospect um, is still quite a difficult thing to do. But, um, you know, it's it's really been like hammering the phone, sending out as many emails as possible, just a numbers game, right? And everybody's been trying to make it better. Everybody's been trying to improve their message, get more personal, et cetera, et cetera. But the question is if it's really moved away from that numbers game at all, right? Uh, and this is something we're going to be talking a bit about today in terms of how to do the outreach and how to be more empathetic in your outreach. So let, let's take a real life example. Now I get um, plenty of cold calls, cold emails, um, cold um, LinkedIn messages, people adding me to LinkedIn networks and so on. I get that probably, I don't know how many I get a day, let's call it five or six a day from different SDRs. Every now and again, I get a, I get one that spurs my interest slightly from an SDR. Um, and this one was one, right? I was looking at this and I said, okay, so the SDR reached out to me. He mentioned a couple of bits and said, okay, as a data-driven marketer, you know, he's pretty certain to be able to help me convert more site visitors into customers. So first of all, uh, he was appealing to me a little bit because he was calling me a data-driven marketer, which I obviously liked for my own ego. Uh, on top of that, he was also promising me that to be able to convert more site visitors. So I said, okay, you know, I'll give this guy the benefit of the doubt. So I said, okay, let me connect with the guy. And I said, look, I know you're offering this particular type of technology. Uh, we're already using it. And, you know, we, we a competitor piece of tech, that competitor piece of tech, we're pretty happy with. And I've already, are, like, in, my, in, my, in the background to this, I'd already been spending the past maybe six months trying to implement it as, as part of our ABM strategy. So with an ABM strategy, you know, you need to get your tech stack right. Um, and this was playing a pivotal role in our tech stack. So for us to change would have to be, you know, some compelling event would have to happen for us to change. But the fact that I replied in that instance should have meant that the SDR should have said, okay, thank you for that. And I'll be in touch in a couple of months. The next message I was that I, that I just received was, hey, I know that you're, you're, you're pretty happy with the current tool that you have, but I can offer you 50% off the one that we have, right? So, if you're having an issue, can we, is it, yeah, I, I think, okay, I just heard a lot of background noise there. Um, so, uh, the, the issue is that um, 
that with this particular type of thing, I automatically assume that the content or that whatever they have to offer is, is, is not of value. So if you drop your price by 50%, you're obviously not selling me on the value of your product. You're selling me on the value of a price. And I can't even put a price on the amount of man hours or, or people hours that have gone into, um, into, creating, a, um, in, into uh, creating an ABM strategy with a specific piece of technology, which I depend on and is a pivotal part of my, of my ABM strategy. So to be fair, I got back to the guy and I said, look, um, you know what, we're, we're not interested, but like, honestly, this 50% actually puts me off. Um, to tell a long story short, we managed to actually have the conversation a bit further down the line. He did manage to redeem himself, but I only entertained the rest of the conversation because I was running an SDR team myself at the time. And I did understand how difficult it is in, today, in today's landscape or that, the, the then landscape to be able to get that connect and actually bring things over the line, right? So, you know, I think the moral of the story here is, is that when you, when you reach out, you need to have a good message, a solid message, um, and also look at the current position where somebody is in. Understand what's happening in their background. Understand what type of data they're, they're looking at already. Understand which competitor I'm using. So he should have known when he did his outreach that I'm already using a competitor. Use the tools that are available to understand, okay, when did I possibly implement that competitor, et cetera. So why did I end up getting outreach like this? Well, it's because like typically, um, and I've done this with SDR teams myself, I've said, okay, what's your call list for today? Look at lists, have one list built off, another list built off, another list, and then based off of that list, that's how you prioritize and make your phone calls, right? Uh, the, the numbers game is, is really hard to follow in terms of, you know, you need to make a certain amount of calls a day, a certain amount of emails need to be sent, social messages need to be sent, connections need to be pushed out, et cetera, et cetera. And that sort of takes away time from being able to do that extra bit of research, okay? So if that person had have reached out to me or had have looked into my background a little bit more, understood what technology I was using, he would have been able to personalize the message a little bit better, right? Um, so there was a, there was there was that part around the personalization after doing some research and then you know it's all about chasing the meeting chasing the meeting chasing the meeting so for him he wasn't necessarily too interested in what was the value from my side because he went back and came back and offered me a 50 percent discount the number one thing that was of interest to him was to close that deal close that deal and he pretty and he showed it to me right um nowadays if you're chasing deals right now you're not going to manage so you shouldn't be chasing to close the, close the deal right now. Chase in order to see how people are doing, ask them how they're doing, how they're getting on with the current situation, et cetera. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so Alex and Mark is a little bit of a, a background noise. So maybe guys, if you go, yeah, go on mute. Perfect, thank you. Um, so like if we want to understand just a little bit around uh, buyer intent, so how could this guy have done it a little bit easier for, for uh, or made his life a little bit easier on him? Okay, so like this is bringing it back to lead feeder. This is just an overview of the lead, lead feeder product real simply, but it, it does show um, a little bit in terms of how to prioritize, how to do some research, and then how to follow up on the message based on somebody's behavior. So the, um, the outreach that I got from that, that, that person was, or that SDR was absolutely freezing cold. There was no, uh, I hadn't been looking at his website. Um, I hadn't filled out any forms. I didn't ask to be contacted. And um, he was going in, you know, a little bit blind, uh, which is surprising because he probably got my name and number off a, a competitor list perhaps. But the fact that the, there was no further research done on that, it showed that he didn't have the tools necessary in order to get in there. Right now, I, I'm not going to beat the lead feeder drum too hard here. Now, I just tell you just what we do is we we have a look at, at the, the companies which are visiting our site and that enables me then to prioritize. So I'm not actually going and doing a cold call. I'm actually looking at the companies which are then visiting my site already and they've already been interacting with my brand. So it's top of mind, okay? So these are the companies that have been, you know, looking at different pages on your site, et cetera. Um, you can then click on those companies, review, the, review them in, in terms of uh, what's, their, what's the info behind that company. Uh, so where are they based? How many employees have they got? 
uh, website, Facebook, LinkedIn profiles, etc. Right. Um, on top of that, then review the behavior of the people that are visiting from that specific company. So we review it um, based on the company level, but you can see that, that there have been different personas or different people from that account visiting. Have a look at the pages that they've been visiting, which channels have they been visiting from? Um, have they been looking, for example, at a pricing page? That would normally show a bit of more buying intent. Have they just been looking at some webinars or maybe looking at some, um, some blog posts? Then you tailor your, tailor your outreach based on that. So it's personalization based on what somebody's interests are rather than going in completely cold, okay? Now this, again, is something that is not, is not new to anybody, really. It's something that people have been trying over the years, but it's more important now than ever to really take that background information and any buyer intent signals that you can get based on your first party data, this being data that's based off your own website, to create relevant outreach to those companies that have been interacting with your brand already, okay? So I think of based on that, I think, you know, the fact that events and also um, the outreach can't be face to face right now, I think it really brings across this topic of digital first and foremost. It makes digital more important than ever. But I think this year is the year of digital empathy. Okay, so digital empathy, I've done a bit of obviously Googling the past couple of days again. Um, digital empathy is, is typically um, put together based on um, products and how, how digital products are made and if those products are seen as empathetic to the user base. I see this as a little bit different. So I think of this as your outreach is having a lot of empathy and how you present yourself as a brand of having a lot of empathy, okay? So if we look at empathy and what that actually means, let's just strip everything back. And I'm by no means a psychologist or anything, but it's, I've, I've, I've got a kid, you know, and I like to teach my, teach my, my, my kid like uh, how, to, how to be empathetic, for example. And when I look at it into things like, like what's the actual meaning of the word empathy, is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, okay? So something that I've been stressing to sales teams for a long time and SDR teams is that even when you're picking up the phone, you know, you have to remember that somebody is gonna be picking up the phone on the other line. And the important word there is somebody, it's a person, okay? Now, nobody wants to feel like a number. And for a long time when SDRs have been doing their outreach to me, I felt like a number. I feel like somebody, you know, I'm on a list somewhere and I need to be closed. That's, the, that's like the number one goal. Close me, close me, close me, close me, close me, okay? There's no feeling there for making a connection, right? Now, I don't want to get too deep into that, but I think if we, if as we, as we look at how things are at the moment and everybody in the same situation, I think it's easier nowadays to have more empathy towards other people that you're picking up the phone to, okay? So if I, I did a bit more research and I came up and seen that there was a couple of different, um, you know, theories or recommendations in terms of how sales leadership versus sales could um, could uh, put empathy uh, or teach empathy to their teams, right? And I did this based on how you teach kids empathy. So I actually searched for um, how to teach kids empathy, okay? So um, as a parent, so in sales leadership, let's think of it, I, and by the way, I've, I've literally copy and pasted this stuff from this Harvard site, in that in order to... to to show empathy towards um, the prospect or in, in, uh, in your messaging as a marketer. You know, you need to show empathy towards others. So you need to be teaching as a sales leadership, you know, how do we be empathetic to one another during this difficult time, right? And then how do we take that and then show that to the outside world when we're doing our marketing, when we're doing our sales? Self-care and self-reflection. I think this, this stands for, for every good sales team. I think um, especially when it comes to an SDR group or typically a little bit younger. If they have good leadership, an SDR leader will li will typically sit behind them and listen to them on when they're doing their call outs, review the emails that they're sending, review the emails that they're sending, making sure that they're on message, making sure that they're, that they're not upsetting people, making sure that they're hitting people at the right time. Um, but it's important to have more and more self-reflection. Um, the messaging needs to be really clear. So more than ever, I think, you know, messaging should always be clear, but we, we need to be really proving our value at the moment, especially as, as, we, as we move forward and we're, we're unsure of how business is going to be in the next coming months. We need to make sure that our message that we're pushing out to people and the product matches the message in the way that our product can actually solve a problem that people have and make that very, very clear in your messaging. Um, 
this is you know a funny point but i've come across this quite a bit when it comes to working with salespeople. is that you know as a sales leader you need to make sure that the the children or your sales team don't uh, don't think that the world resol revolves around them so it's important for everybody to understand that hey you know we're all in the same boat here and the quicker we learn that and the quicker we understand that the more empathetic we are going to be towards one another when it comes to to, to reach outs so it's a simple example would be instead of looking at who I can chase to try to close today. Look at it this way: is who's in it? Who am I already in the sales cycle with? And who can I pick up the phone to and ask them if they're doing okay? Or send an email and ask them if they're doing okay. Or send them a LinkedIn post, ask them if they're doing okay. Or give them some tips in terms of how they can manage their business a little bit better now based on the current situation. Okay. Um, and as always, ethical dilemmas are something that should be discussed from sales leadership down to sales teams. And at the moment, this is going to be difficult. Um, due to everybody wanting to, to close new business, there are going to be probably more ethical situations or dilemmas coming up. It's just important to stay on top of those and make sure that you're dealing with them accordingly. Um, from a salesperson perspective, um, there's a, you know, again, this was, a, <laughs> this was another site that I found a blog post around teaching empathy to children again. This one's a little bit more playful than the one that I, that I got from Harvard. But again, you know, there's, there's a couple of areas. So in, encourage self-learning. So always be learning what the next new thing is. And Alex, myself, and Mark were just talking before this. The way that we do things now needs to change. We can't just be beating the same old drum again because people just won't be able to accept it. We're in a different world at the moment. We need to change, okay? We need to test new things. We need to try new messages. Um, it's it, start learning up on what other people are doing and, and Alex and Mark are going to bring you through some of the things that they're doing currently that you guys can learn from as well. So take the responsibility for what's happening at the moment as well. Always be reporting back in terms of how we're looking in terms of sales figures, how can we get a little bit better and so on. Create a journal, right? It says an emotional journal here. I'm not telling salespeople to create an emotional journal, but I'm asking people to create a journal based on what's working, what isn't working. You know, now is a time for really like quite a lot of testing. And that's testing in terms of which channels are working, which outreach messages are working, when something's working, how are we replicating that across the rest of the organization? You know, we're in a, a new normal now where we don't have a playbook for, so we need to start recreating that playbook, right? And that comes on the ground. That's the front line. That's the, the salespeople and marketing people that are doing the outreach, right? Um, and I think two important points, and this is a good segue into the next section, is, you know, Teaching to be some, to being in somebody else's shoes. So this is obviously the number one point in empathy. But this is something, you know, that I mentioned early on when I got that outreach from that SDR before. That person didn't put themselves in my shoes by any means. They didn't try to understand what was happening in the background before they did their initial outreach. Later on, it was understood when I explained, hey, you know, this is the situation that we're currently in. But, like, you could have found out that information quite simply by using a number of tools. Um, you know, this is important to be able to see, okay, what type of behavior do I do I have? What are my demographics? Where am I based? What current technology am I using? What am I looking at online? What have I been looking at on your site, et cetera, et cetera. And then also encourage random acts of kindness. So Reach Desk is a direct mail company. Um, and, you know, this, this is uh, exactly in their, in their ballpark or in their wheelhouse here. So um, it's about making sure that, you know, there's these little things that we can be doing right now to our prospects to make their lives a little bit more comfortable. So we should be looking and, and uh, reinventing the wheel somewhat when we're doing that. And uh, Alex and Mark will bring you through some of those things now. So let's take a look at, you know, uh, putting these things into play. And I'm going to hand it across over to, over to Alex and Mark to, to take us through some of these things. And guys, I'll, I'll drive the slides here if you just want to say whenever you want me to move on to the next slide. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. We're having some issues here, guys. When you guys gonna have to mute with Mark? Okay. Oh, I think it might be me that's to mute Mark. Hold on. Um, allow me to mute real quick, and maybe that will help. Yeah, it might just be my own, guys. Mark, if you want to keep yourself to the next slide, then you have to go. Okay. Okay, you guys go now. All right. Um, can you guys hear me? 
Yep. All right. So why don't we move to the next slide? Um, I think, you know, I, and thank you, Andy. I'm Mark Shabbat with Reach Desk, and I'm the CEO over here. And you know, we're you know we're definitely in a different moment, obviously, um, in the world. And as we're talking about, we need to kind of um, change the playbook a little bit. Um, and if you can move to the next slide, that'd be great. Um, we've got, um, you know, certain things that we really need to do. And this slide is really something that I'm trying to, you know, um, talk about to inspire some folks um, to kind of take the lead. So the first thing is, is we've got to change the conversation, right? We've got to do it fast. Um, the playbook that you used to have, um, I guarantee it's not going to work. Um, this is an opportunity where everyone in sales and marketing has to, you know, come in and, and think about how they want to um, do something in a new way, right? Um, you need to be true to your brand, right? This is an opportunity where you either reinforce your brand or, you, um, or your brand turns into something that's upsetting people. So for example, if, if, it, if you're trying to, you know, push call to actions today in your, in your conversations, or in your outreach in emails or in your marketing campaigns, um, you're turning people off, right? No one wants to be converted today in the world. Um, you know, if you've got, if you've got um, pay walls or if you've got gated content, you need to fight the battles in your organization today to change that because people don't have the time. They don't have, they know, if they if you fill in that gated content, they know somebody's going to be trying to sell them tomorrow, and no one wants to be sold to today. Um, this is an opportunity for all of us um, as sales and marketing professionals to help change this conversation. Right. The first thing is is we need to be brave about changing this conversation in, inside our own companies. Right. That there are, um, you know, the the knee jerk you know, reaction is do more of what we did yesterday that worked. And the reality is, is that those approaches, you know, need to, aren't going to work. Um, we got to be empathetic. We've got to um, start with communicating to our customers and our intended prospects that you as a brand care, right? A message out to your customer that just says, how are you doing? Um, here's an Uber Eats voucher. Um, you know, I, I hope you're doing well. That's a really powerful message today. And, and, and leave it at that. Um, you are, we're looking for, you know, just to communicate that our brand is there. We're trying to help. We're happy to deliver value. We're happy to educate but we don't want anything in return for that, right? If you can do that as a brand, you're, you will reinforce your brand today. You will reinforce um, your conversation with your customers and you will reinforce your opportunity with prospective customers. And I guarantee that they will respond in a positive way. They will either be there and start to have a conversation with you. They will lead that conversation. They will ask you for help, right? If you're there for them. Um, because asking them to do something today may not be possible in their environment. Asking them to make a decision today may be very challenging for them to figure out even how to start that conversation. So um, the opportunity you have is to be there for them. And when they're ready, they'll come to you if they trust you. So we're trying to engender trust. And the way to do that is, is that all of us have to put on our marketing hats across our entire companies. We have to go have the conversations internally to change the conversation. It, we, we have to be brave. The first time you ask to do this, you'll probably be told no, right? Your CEO, your CFO, everyone in the company will say, no, we got to do it this other way. You have to be brave in these moments. These times will be defined in all walks of life by people that take action, right? Um, in our medical communities today, we're seeing people take action, you know, in the world. In our public lives, we're seeing people take action. We're all 
you know, taking our own action by making sure that we're socially distanced, right? Within our companies, our companies need to survive. And these times will be defined by all of us as marketing and sales professionals that take action, right? By changing this conversation first. Um, it's a human thing, right? Today, I'm not, you can't sell me anything, but I can learn to trust you today. I can learn to value you today. I can learn what you can offer from me today. You can help educate me today. And you know what, when I'm ready, you'll be top of my list, right? And that might be soon, if you've got something that can help me right in this moment. It might be a month from now, right? But if you, if you engender that trust today, you'll be the number one company I call when the moment is right. You'll be the first one when business gets back in order for me to do business with. And that's the opportunity we have right now as sales and marketing professionals. And, you know, we're, it's, we're, no one's going to do this but us. We're the ones who have to call our own CEOs and say, we got to change the way we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's on, it's our responsibility because we know this. We're in these rooms and conversations every day. We have to be the ones that, that help change the world. And it starts, it starts with sales. It starts with marketing if you're in business. Um, it starts with serving your customers. Um, it starts with doubling down on making sure I'm delivering value and I'm asking for nothing back today. Yeah, so I think that's it. Mark, can you hear me okay? Can I very much can, Alex. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that, um, I, I think that, that kind of leads into, into why why we decided to do this webinar. Um, you know, I, I was uh, at the top of the Empire State Building last Saturday, um, and next thing you know, I get a notification from Mr. Trump saying all flights have been um, you know, back to the UK. You've got two days, so I rushed straight onto a plane. And the first thing I randomly did was I started looking at what's, what's happening on our website, what's happening around us. And I started noticing the trends. So Andy, if you want to move to the next slide, I can show you like, why, why I started speaking to Andy. I was like, look, I, we, I felt like I needed to step into other people's shoes. Uh, I'm going to take you through some plays that you guys can use to like today. By the way, these are just my ideas. These are just things that I think businesses could be doing. They're not definitive. Like, try them. If you think they're wrong, then, then, then stop doing them. But the first thing I did, um, someone who's, who's sort of leading the, the marketing side of things from our business is step into people's shoes. So I actually went on to lead feeder and I started looking like, what are our prospects doing? What are our customers doing? What are they searching for? What do they need from me uh, right now? And I started noticing the trends. We could see people's intent. So if you use lead feeder, then you've already got a powerful tool, but you should start leveraging tools that allow you to start looking to people, what they're doing, what are they thinking right now? Look into all the different stages of your sales funnel. And then you can engage with them with value-led messaging. If I know that uh, I closed, lost a deal, um, and that's gone back to the SDR team, but actually they're now for, like searching my website about this, this, and this, I can go back to them and, and create a value-led message based on that intent data that I've got right now. Um, it's a really easy thing to do. And that, that's the first thing I did. And that's when I started talking to Andy saying, hey, we need to give some people some things to start doing so they can put this in play. That's why we're sitting here. So first thing is like, step into people's shoes really try and focus on um, your customers and the people out there and try and give them the things that they need right now. Um, the next thing, and if you wouldn't mind, um, in, in terms of what, what, what I think you should be doing next, it, like obviously you can link all this together. You can link, link into um, you know, Salesforce, Leadfeeder, Marketo, but ultimately start looking at, at what people are doing right now, uh, tying that together and being really clever about things. Because if you just take your, your list, based approach like Andy said before and just go after the same lists with the same playbook and not focus on what people are doing right now it's just not going to work and you could actually end up uh, offending people yeah and I think just to add here as well it's just in terms of the different information that you can gather from here and what we tried to show here is is that from your website there's a there's so much information in which you can gather across you know prospects existing clients people that are already in a sales cycle Typically, you'd use a marketing automation platform to look at, at, at visitors that you've already identified, you know, that you've already placed a cookie on. Um, but there may be new personas coming on from existing deals or deals that may not have, that feel, it felt as though that they, were, they weren't going to close. 
um, getting new personas on and seeing what those people have been doing on your site can be very valuable information. So uh, also seeing the sources to which they're visiting your website from and then having that all sync back across into your CRM for your sales team to follow up with is, is all very is all very helpful because it's actionable information that you can take forward in your approach. Um, and also, as we said before, getting more into the shoes of the person that's that's looking at your site and that's interacting with your brand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So after that, I think well, you, you can easily start identifying who, who we should be talking to and in what way. Now, this is a silly photo of me from earlier today. Uh, I got on a call with, with a prospect of ours and, and one of them was wearing a hat and I just thought, it's such a nice thing that people have like there's no way anyone would have done that in their office like a month ago right? so people feel that actually they can get a bit personal they're, they're in their homes right now most of us i'm i'm sitting in uh, uh, at my home right now so people are starting to think differently about how they can behave so therefore you should be doing the same as well so you know don't waste people's time is, is the first thing but like think about how like how they've been interacting with your company in what way but then you can sort of show you care. You can start doing the small things. This is just a thing of me on Vidyard, recording someone with video, uh, with me wearing a hat, just kind of saying, look, hey, I'm in the same situation as you. How can I help? Like, I'm gonna do things in a slightly more personal way. Um, take the playbook, throw it out the window, start being a bit different, be personal, put your own personality in there, but ultimately make it about your prospect. Um, don't send someone something saying, hey, can I book a meeting, value prop? Send them a little video saying, hey, look, this is me looking a bit silly wearing a hat. But more importantly, I'm here to like, help. If you want some of my time, like it's here. Like, if, 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 if what you think um, we can help you with right now is going to be valuable for you, then, then, let's, then let's talk. But uh, bring some value to the table and do it in a personalized way. And Alex, you even mentioned something yesterday when we spoke. You just said, like, OK, the first thing that happened once, you know, everything started going a little bit south was that you spoke to your SDR team and said, okay, stop booking meetings. Start speaking with people, but stop booking meetings. Yeah. You know, and that's like, I've, I've, I've never heard somebody that manages an SDR team to tell them to stop booking meetings. You know, like this is a completely counterintuitive, but this is by far the, the right way to go. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, and I'll say the crazy thing about that is we started booking more meetings with that strategy. Yeah, it, it, it sounds silly. But if, if you if you go in with the mentality that no one wants to book a meeting with you now, but if you can give someone something valuable, I can guarantee there will be people on this webinar right now who sell products that they know will help people in this situation. But even then, this is not an opportunistic moment. This is still, you have to treat people in a personal way. Um, yeah, this is a terrible situation, but we, like, if we help each other out and we do it in the right way, we can we can do this in, in, in a good fashion that will move us all forward. So the second thing is, yeah, get personal, do things differently, but like think about your prospect and, and their situation right now. Now, the next thing, like, this is no secret, all the events are being cancelled or postponed. As Andy mentioned before, um, there are so many, that the, the big ones, like Adobe Summit is one of the flagship events of the year. So what, what everyone's doing is they're moving everything online, okay? So right now, that makes sense. We're all online together now. There are hundreds of, hundreds of us on this webinar right now. Um, but like, if you're going to do that, like, start making it engaging. You, you can't just have a, a, what was a day conference and do a day online system um you've got to keep people engaged do the small things like buy someone lunch like if you if you have 50 people uh, on, a, on a virtual event with you like get them something send them some uber eats or something as mark said send them some coffees or something to, to so they can deliver something to their home do those things that, that are going to make their day a bit better i'm looking into like gamification there are things like kahoot you can in the middle of an online event use something which gets people to to have like a, a virtual quiz and then have, have like winners and stuff um, we're going to be starting like an online coffee shop where people can just come and hang out and meet. And if you turn up, we'll, we'll send you a coffee. I, there is no strings attached, but we know that people like coffee. We know they like talking to other people and they're all cooped up in their bedrooms. So these are the kind of things that you can be doing. Do those standout things for your customers and your prospects and like start, start connecting with them. And ultimately, if you do it right, although there's no ask right now, again, this kind of ties in with how we'll be using lead feeder. But you can then start tracking that afterwards. Hey, I invited these 50 accounts. Now these 10 accounts are all over our website and they're looking at this kind of content. And that might be the time when you start to engage with them because you know that, that that's the right time for them. These digital events are super interesting, guys. 
I like I, I'm really interested to see which way this is going to go because from a tracking perspective alone, from a marketing perspective, like this is awesome because you'll be able to see okay that person came directly from that specific event. It makes attribution so much easier because it ties in. If somebody visits my site, it's probably because they clicked on a link which was at that specific event, digital event, and then they've come in, they've downloaded something. I'm able to track it all the way back. So it's like it's it's super lucrative, and there's so many data points that you can be working off of in order to personalize something even further. So like it's uh, it's yeah. Let's let's see how this goes. I'm really interested. In it. Yeah, there are, there are lots of people saying that that um, the physical event is is never going to happen again. I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, but all, I also think that in a month's time, after we've all sat on two or three digital events every day, the effect will start to wear off a little bit, and we'll have to think of something better then. So. We'll see what happens, but right now it's a great way to do it. And if you are going to do it, don't just expect people to turn up and, and just listen. Like if you're going to get someone, particularly like a day event, make it engaging and, and like do something differently for them. Yeah, so I mean, you know, one of the things that you you still need to drive attendance because everyone's doing digital events. So how long is it before people are evented out online, right? When everyone everyone's doing the same strategy, right? So you still have to stand out. You still have to be smart marketers. Um, you still have to drive attendance. How do you do that? You know, you can send people gift um, to so that they remember about it. You can send them the coffee. You can make gamify the experience. You can tee up future experiences so people will spend an hour or two with you in these digital events. Um, there, there's things that you need to do to make it um, feel a little more interactive. Um, the bar is going to be raised on digital events because. Um, people will gravitate to what's working for them. Um, and, you know, they'll go away from the ones that are a little boring and not as helpful. Yeah, exactly. And to that, to that point, Mark, um, as I mentioned before, Kahoot is something that I recommend everyone looks into right now. I'm using it internally for my own team, by the way, like Fridays. Look into Kahoot. You can create a quiz. My advice is, this is totally off topic, but get each of your team members to submit something anonymous about, about them put it into a quiz format, get all your employees to have a little uh, Friday evening session, uh, all online, and then just like the winner gets a prize or something. But that can be used for online events, um, for like prospecting, uh, for your marketing team, but e even for your employees, you know, we're, we're out there to help people uh, engage their employees too. Cool, so the fourth one is, is, is more around like surprising people, right? They're, We've all got stuff going on in the background. We've all got kids screaming, r r running around the place. We've all got, you know, we're all working from home and our, and our personal lives are still still happening. So that moment where, you know, you understand the prospects is engaged, like they're, they're starting to engage with the correspondence you're putting out there. Perhaps it's just that moment where you can make a difference for their personal life. Like you can send them something to their home to make them feel better. Um, you can make it shareable, like whether it's just something they can give to their kids, send them coloring books or something so that so that they can keep their families occupied and happy, but also that, that send them something that might make a difference to their day. Don't ask for anything in return. Right? Do not say, if I send you this, will you book a meeting? Just, just do that thing for them right now. Um, and then afterwards, again, if you can track their engagement afterwards. If you, Some people will come back to you saying, that's amazing, thank you. What you said makes sense, let's have a meeting. But equally, you can start to see, well, that prospect or that account that I sent something to, um, they're, they're still engaged and maybe it's the right time for me to reach out. So you can surprise people. And if you go to the next slide, you can see what we're doing in the background at the moment. Um, we're, we're doing this for our customers. We're doing it for ourselves. Like we're sending this link to, to people saying, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about you right now. We can't send you something to your office because you're not there. So here's a landing page where you can order yourself one of these bundles. One of them's got like jelly snakes for the kids, it's got water bottles, it's got like calendars, might even have like a bottle of hand sanitizer, just a ton of things that are gonna uh, help you right now. Um, and you can just put your own data in, it's not even gonna go into our CRM and we'll just send you like a gift straight to your home. It's gonna make your day a little bit better. We don't ask for anything in return. Okay, um, as I mentioned before, and this is a short one, like, I think the, the caption on the right says it all. If you don't listen, you, like, you don't sell anything. So give people your time. Like we're, we're all stuck, isolated right now. Um, there's very little human interaction. Sometimes you can just reach out to someone saying, hey, what are you guys doing right now? Um, how about we just talk about stuff? No agenda. Let's just, I'll give you some of my time. I can tell you what I'm hearing out there. Like I've spoken to about 30 CMOs this week, loads of CEOs calling me up, just saying, like, Al, I'm not here to sell you stuff, but I'd actually quite value your time. Like, do you, can you tell me what to do? 
and, and, and likewise and i've learned a ton of things from them that i'm putting into play and as a result some of them they might sell me something quite soon um so 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 they're, they're saying to me that i'm here for you i'm doing the same for them and we're starting conversations just because we're giving each other um, our time yeah i fully agree with you there alex like i've, I've noticed as well just generally a general sense of community on a global scale at the moment just anybody that i've spoken with everybody has something in common right now like as you said everybody's sitting at home everybody has similar issues you've got kids screaming dogs barking whatever it might be you know you mentioned earlier that your back is in bits because you know you've been sitting at a at a <laughs> at, a, at a chair that you're not used to be sitting in. It's not an office chair. It's a kitchen table chair or something. You know, uh, it's 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 about like relating to people right now and just you know reaching out and asking if they're doing okay. That's, you know, that can go a long way. You know, people are asking, well, what can I actually say or do? Pick up the phone to somebody that you've been speaking to prior all this mess and and ask them, hey, how are you coping? How are things going for you? Let's have a conversation. You know, you'd yeah. be surprised what that connection will do. Exactly. And look, look, Mark's our CEO. Um, if you're an SDR, uh, don't don't be afraid of reaching out to CEOs or, or, or CMOs like Andy or, or founders like myself. Uh, the, the the hierarchical structure used to look like that, and people were afraid about that. It's kind of leveled out, right? If you have some value to give someone, no matter how experienced they are, you think they can learn, then give them give them your time too. Don't be afraid about that. For sure, for sure. Even Lead Feeder, we're a remote working company, so eighty percent or so of our workforce, in any case, are remote. So in terms of efficiency and keeping employee efficiency and different things with normal concerns, which something like this would bring, is like it's not a concern to us. We've got good experience in terms of how to how to push things remotely anyway. And I've been actively offering LinkedIn on LinkedIn asking, hey, you know, does anybody need any advice? Like we have mm. it and we have C levels based at a remote. Like I I'm sitting in Vienna right now and I, I, I'm working from home. And this is my office anyway. I might have the logo on the wall, but this is my home. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, wherever we can help, that's the most important thing. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, okay. Now, well, one thing I started doing is uh, this week I started just referring people. Right. Um, I realized that 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 some of our customers needed to speak to some of our other customers. Some people in my network needed to speak to other people. Uh, if I were you guys, even as SDR, start a referral scheme. No, it doesn't even have to be a scheme. But start referring people, right? You you all have people you know who who you can link up with other people who can help, right? If you refer people, I don't know if you guys might already have a referral scheme in place, but if you start to refer people and link people up, it creates this network effect, and in return, people will give back to you. They'll say, "Hey, oh, this this person um, has done something great for me, and actually, I think I can help them in return." So I think people should be starting up referral programs, not 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 asking for anything in return, but just just giving. And you know, I've referred about forty people to to people I know, and I've had some great referrals to my business this week, saying, "Ah, oh, you guys should be looking into reach desk." So it has this this altruistic effect, right? If you can do something for people, then they, they give you something in return. Mark, I'm not sure what what you think about that, and whether you've got an experience with 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 referrals. Yeah, I mean, they're they're the best you know, source of good conversations today, um, a warm, a warm introduction to somebody. And then again, just a nice chat, make a big difference. Um, you'll find opportunity, you'll, you'll share opportunity with other people. And you know, that, that, that behavior, you know, blossoms for and, and compounds on itself. So I completely agree with that strategy. Nice. Okay, thanks. Um, now, look, a lot of us had events planned, but I was supposed to be in San Francisco um, at uh, SaaS stock and sales lofts event. Um, then I was supposed to be speaking at event next week, and a lot of my team had meetings booked. Right, we had tons of meetings booked. So, so what you can do is you can still take that that opportunity, right? And as I said, it's not about being opportunistic, but look into those meetings and just say to that that those people, hey, look, this is the reason why I wanted to meet you. This is why we had that meeting booked. Now. Ultimately, if the meeting was booked in the first place, then they should know. But remind them, say, look, we were going to talk about this. Is this still of interest to you during these times? Is this still going to add value? If so, I'm still available. Here's a link to my calendar. Put it on their terms. If, if, if they still want to talk to you about that and they want to get some of your time, then, then give it to them. But remind them of why, why you were meeting. 
reconfirm why it might whether it's still of interest and then just say that hey let's let's talk and you know what we do is we we reward people for their time everyone who takes a demo with us we give them we give them something in return saying hey i really value your time thank you for joining here's a starbucks on us like go and go and grab a starbucks on me um we don't expect any return you've already given enough to us but you can go back to all those meetings that you had booked do something for someone and and just make sure that what you're going to deliver to them is valuable and you can have a really positive conversation Okay, so I've got um, two more main ones. So this is something that I saw earlier. Um, yeah, I think if, for those of you who don't know the company called Yotpo, they're an awesome business. Um, I saw one of the account executives um, post this and what they've been doing over the past couple of years is they've been sending out a lot of like ABM bundles. The sales team will, will send notes or like things like cupcakes or like gifts to kind of help them nurture their, their sales cycle and everything. And actually they've stopped doing that. Right? They've decided that actually what we're not going to do now is we're not going to do that. We're going to give all the, the, the monetary value of what we would usually send you. We're going to donate that to charity. Right? Um, this, these kind of um, posts that I'm seeing on LinkedIn, they're blowing up really fast. If you can create a lot of credibility, but do it in, in, in a genuine way, whereby we're just saying that we're going to help the world out there. We want, to, we want all the money that we would normally spend on this to go to these causes because you know, people at Age UK need a lot more support right now. Um, then, then you know, this is not actually nothing to do with prospecting. This is just about being a mini marketer. This is about doing something that for your for your own brand, but ultimately for for the good of the world that that will essentially help you in in, in these times of need because you're you're doing something good for the world. So I think it's just something that we should all be doing is trying to help things that don't even impact our business right now and uh, put things forward in a positive way. Now, I think ultimately the, the last one for me is, as I mentioned before, if you rip up the playbook right now, um, I think that's probably one of the best things you can do. Now, your existing customer base is is almost the most important thing, really. You've got to be reaching out to your customers. Now, this, you might think, how does this tie in within Pipeline? If you have a product that, that you can go to your customers and say, look, I think we, we need to be getting better at helping use this because it's going to help you in these times of need. Um, that might actually be an opportunity, right? They might start referring you to other businesses. You can ask for that in return, but there might even be more, more opportunities for you to be delving into that and, and actually expanding your existing customer base based on you know, what you understand about them. So start by showing you care them, care about them, do something they just wouldn't expect, right? Just go out to them and say, send them a video from, from an SDR saying, hey, I'm just thinking about you right now. I know these, these are the types of things you're using us for, but I had these other ideas. And you may even find that your customer base is saying, actually, we need to upgrade this. We need to get more out of your tool because there's so much value there. And your whole organization could be leveraging a lot more value from, from the existing customer base. So whilst we talk about prospecting a lot, you might think about selling into your existing customer base, but ultimately don't forget about them because yeah, these are the ones you can engage with and prioritize right now because you know so much about them. So, so don't forget about these guys. Um, I'd like to get Mark to sort of close off on, on the final bit because ultimately very, very soon, um, you know, we're all going to be going back to work and you know, we don't know when that's going to be, but let's start thinking about that. So, um, Mark, I'm going to hand over to you for this bit. Yeah. I mean, this kind of goes back to what I was saying at the beginning, you know, if you are demonstrating your prospects and customers today that you care, that you're delivering, you deliver value to them, um, at some point your, your customers and prospects their business is going to get back to normal. That might be months from now, it might be six months from now, but however long that is, um, you wanna be the first call, right? You don't wanna be the 10th thing they choose to do because that means you're not doing business with them until a year from now, probably. But if you're the first thing they do, that's really important to your brand. Um, and the way you tee yourself up for that is, is, is to demonstrate today you care, right? To not ask, for anything back, it's 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 completely empathetic message, um, and you tee yourself up for your for the future. That's 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 very important because the world will get back in order. Um, we will all we will all get past this. Um, it will be a hard moment for a lot of businesses. It'll be a hard moment for individuals, but we will it will it will it will become one first. This will become a little normal. And then it will get better. 
And those are the moments where there's opportunity and you just have to be teeing your brand up um, and your, your tactics up to take advantage of that when the time is right. And um, this is, this is, this is when you start it. Yeah. I love that. Now I'd like to finish this on a, on a really positive note um, because yes, a lot of us have had, had, had the world turned upside down recently. Right. I think we're all feeling it. Um, I, I was looking into what happened in the 2008, 2009 crash. Um, and if you look at the kind of businesses that started then, there are so many of fantastic businesses that that did a few things to really make sure that they they more than weathered the storm, right? If you if you do things in a in, in a positive way, if you all club together, if you think less about yourself and more about your customers, then then you can you can do really well. And and you know, in ten years' time, we'll be looking at another list of companies like the Airbnbs, the Stripes, the Ubers, the Pinterests, um, the Slacks. These are all companies that in two thousand eight, two thousand nine were incorporated, and hey, they're all doing pretty well right now. So this you know we should take that as a positive like there's so much that we can all be doing i think we should be helping each other all uh, we should be staying true to our brands and we should be operating in a way that doesn't ask but but, but in, in a way that gives more than, than we should do because in return i think our, our, our prospects and customers will reward us with at the very least their time and if not their their business yeah i fully agree i think kindness and understanding in this particular time is going to go a long way cool um, so yeah, I think I think that's that's everything from us, uh, Andy. Like, I think this has been um, it's been a real pleasure. So, how about we open this up to a Q and A if you want to lead that? For sure, for sure. So, guys, we have uh, another couple of minutes left. We can also stay on, I think, for another couple of minutes over if, if people are interested. But uh, we do have time for some questions. I've seen that the chat has been filling up uh, pretty rapidly throughout the course of this. But um, I see that uh, Jonathan or Johnny has been has been answering as many questions as he can. If uh, your question doesn't manage to get answered now, we can please follow up with us on LinkedIn or follow up with us directly afterwards. We will be sending out an email. Um, I think as well, just one other thing before we go into the Q&A session, we will be sending out an email uh, just um, after this, just regarding some, um, so, some activities that we can help you with. So uh, myself and Alex have been speaking just before this. We are both quite well rehearsed in, in account-based marketing. We'd like to offer some sessions with smaller groups of people for account-based marketing, teach people how to get the messaging right for certain personas at the moment, which tech to implement, um, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. Um, so we'll send out an email in the, in the next few minutes on that. And we'd ask people to respond to that email if they're interested in attending one of those sessions. Um, and we'll, we'll keep you posted about what the next steps are. But I just wanted to mention that before we go into Q&A in case we run out of time. So let me check for the questions here. Um, there's one question here, guys, and I'm going to give this over to you guys, is uh, what should we do about direct mail? So in terms of, I guess, this question is based around the fact that, you know, is snail mail the right way to go right now, and especially given the fact that we don't know what's around the corner, you know, if the post is still going to be sent, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, of course, it's a good question. Um, look, part of what we do is is like we, we allow you to send like e-gifting so you can send gifts via email. So whether that is a Starbucks or an Uber Eats or just a subscription to the Disney channel for, for your kids, um, you can send all that kind of good stuff through us. But when it comes to the physical channel, one of the businesses that is still booming at the moment is logistics, right? People are still getting stuff delivered to their homes. Um, we're not sending people to, we're not sending items to offices anymore. We're, as I mentioned before, that landing page, we're helping our customers create landing pages so they can redirect things, um, gifts, direct mail, whatever it is, to people's homes. Uh, that, that, that is data that those prospects or recipients um, will enter themselves and they're effectively sending it to themselves. The surprise and delight element is just sending them the link to the landing page saying, hey, I want to send you one of these. I don't want your address data because it's personal to you. So just put it in here. It will just automatically send through through uh, through our system. Um, but it allows you to leverage that channel and actually surprise and delight people in their homes. Super. Thanks, Alex. There's one other question in here from uh, Laval. How, how would you respond to the argument against having empathy? Uh, so it's about against having empathy because one of their senior sales leaders or one of senior leaders is telling the sales team that empathy is bad because people will take advantage of you. Uh, he, the person that wrote this said he doesn't believe this, but I'd love to hear our response. Like I can start with that. Um, honestly, um, 
I, I think, and just based on the conversations I've been having with people, anybody that's been picking up the phone to me over the past days, I don't think anybody has wanted to sell to me. I think anybody, like I had a very interesting conversation yesterday with somebody from HubSpot. So everybody knows HubSpot, marketing automation company, and the salesperson there called me just because she promised she'd check in. Um, and I, I had a very honest conversation with her as a prospect. I said, look, we're not in a situation now where we're interested in buying. And she completely understood. It's absolutely fine. And then she asked me how my personal situation is here. And we spoke for about 25 minutes. Okay. And myself as a prospect, like we got it, we got the business side of things out of the way very quickly. You know, she understood the situation immediately. And from my perspective, I know that when the time comes and the need comes for us to use a tool or to, to, to have HubSpot or as a, you know, upgrade our marketing automation platform, I'm going to go to HubSpot. You know, I, like I already made that decision yesterday, right? It's, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next week. It's not going to happen next month. But when we do, I, I, I assure you that that's what the system we're going to go with because I've managed to create a connection. You know, um, I think as a, as a person, you can realize when somebody's trying to, to push you too hard, it's, it's obvious, you know? Um, and it's based on their approach. If you feel uncomfortable, then there's no empathy. And if you feel if you feel comfortable with somebody, you know, that's when you show that empathy is working. That's my take on it. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I mean, here's you know the the argument that somebody will take advantage of you. Um, you know, it's possible. It's certainly possible somebody will take advantage of you if you're empathetic. But the flip side of that is trying to convert somebody today just doesn't work, right? Um, so I would tend to want to lean into a strategy that will work where there is the possibility one out of you know 50 times somebody will attempt to take advantage of me. I'll feel a lot better about that approach than the approach that I know doesn't work, that I know it's not the right time for, that I know will make people uncomfortable. It'll make people choose to do things that they just don't really want to do today. And I'm a really good salesperson. I can, I can make people, we all, all good salespeople, all good marketers, all good BDRs. We can change people's opinions so that they do some things with us sometimes. But guess what? Those folks are the folks that don't really like your brand after that transaction or that interaction. And that's the thing that we can't let happen today. Um, so I would tend to want to lean in the other way. It feels better. It's more human. It, right now, it makes a lot of sense. And I'll take the responsibility as a leader of my organization and I will take, um, you know, the, I, I will accept that somebody may try to take advantage of me in that process. But um, but I feel a lot better about that approach than the other approach. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, okay, so that's that's it in terms of questions. Um, guys, thank you so much for attending. Um, if you need any help with anything, if you need you know some advice on any of the stuff that we've mentioned today, any advice in remote working, uh, like anything at all where you think we can add value, please do reach out. Uh, you can find us on LinkedIn. We will, uh, we, from Lead Feeder side, we'll we'll send you out some information now in the next couple of minutes around these ABM sessions that we're going to be running. Um, please, like I, I'd recommend you to jump on board with those. Um, do do let us know. Um, there, there will be limited places on these, so make sure you just get back in touch as as, as quick as you can, because um, we want to keep the the numbers relatively low on them so that people get the most value out of them. But um, guys. Thanks again. It's been really great. And uh, we wish you all the best and stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. Great to speak to you. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah. As I said, as Andy said, stay, stay healthy, stay safe. And um, if you need anything from us, just, just hit us up. Thanks, Thank guys. All right, guys.